Hi there, my name is Matt Elliott and I'm a developer advocate with Rubrik. Thanks for tuning into this video. We're going to talk about configuring Cloud Out, which is the feature that Rubrik uses to archive data to the cloud, in this case, AWS. We'll be using Red Hat Ansible along with AWS CloudFormation to automatically configure both the cloud and the Rubrik cluster. If you're not quite up to speed with CloudFormation, we've got a video that's already posted that deep dives into how to use CloudFormation to configure the cloud-specific bits. In this video, we're going to be focusing a bit more on the Ansible side, but we'll see both sides of the solution. If you're new to Rubrik, or if you're not familiar with how CloudOut works, here are the basics. Rubrik's SLA-driven protection policies allow our users to easily define the frequency of backups and how long they should be retained. The SLA domain includes settings that define when to archive older backups to a CloudOut archive location. For example, you may choose to archive any backups older than 30 days to an AWS S3 bucket. Through the power of Rubrik's predictive search feature, all backup metadata is accessible, regardless of whether or not the backup has been archived. It doesn't matter if your backups are on the local Rubrik cluster or archived to the cloud. It's simple to find the file you wish to recover and quickly restore it. We'll be using Ansible to drive several configuration tasks in this demo. If you've never used Ansible before, here's what you need to know. Ansible is a popular configuration management tool written in Python. It can be used to install software, manage servers, provision on-premises or cloud infrastructure, among many other things. Ansible uses the idea of playbooks, which are written in the YAML data format. Each playbook is made up of one or more tasks, and the tasks are executed in order from top to bottom. We're just scratching the surface of what can be done with Ansible today, but it is on widespread use and has support for ma most major infrastructure stacks. Using Ansible is as simple as building a playbook and running it with the ansible-playbook command. Ansible playbooks reference modules, which are the vendor-specific bits that allow Ansible to manage different endpoints. Many modules are bundled right into Ansible, but over time, this approach has become a bit unwieldy for the Ansible maintainers. New modules are being decoupled from core Ansible and are now hosted on Ansible Galaxy. This is where you can find the rubric modules for Ansible today. Now let's look at how we can use Ansible to automatically configure CloudOut. As I mentioned before, we're also going to use AWS CloudFormation, but instead of using it directly, Ansible will handle cloning the rubric-provided CloudFormation template to configure CloudOut to S3. Once CloudFormation finishes configuring all of the de desired resources in AWS, it returns the results back to Ansible, including IAM keys and KMS keys. This information is then used to configure the CloudOut archive location on a rubric cluster. This means that we can use a single Ansible playbook to do all of the configuration needed, both in the cloud and on-prem. An example of this Ansible playbook can be found on the link displayed on your screen. You'll need a few prerequisites installed to use this solution, including Python, which you can find at python.org, and Ansible, which you can find at ansible.com. You'll also need the Rubrik SDK for Python and the Rubrik modules for Ansible, which you can find over at build.rubrik.com. So here's what that site looks like. Just click on Python on the front page, Click on the quick start and it will take you to the documentation, which includes information on how to install this particular SDK. Similarly, for our Ansible modules, click on use cases and Ansible. Same thing, click on quick start. If you scroll down a bit, you'll find information on how to install those modules. Now taking a look at our rubric cluster. Let's take a look at the archive locations that have already been configured on this particular cluster. As we can see, there's a few already set up on here, but of course we're going to be adding a new one. Popping over into AWS, you can see that there's a few cloud formation stacks that are already set up, but we're also going to be cloning a cloud formation template based off one that is provided by Rubrik to complete the setup of CloudOut in AWS. So let's take a look at the actual Ansible playbook that's going to, to do all of this work for us. It's going to automate both cloud formation and then the, the configuration of our rubric cluster. So as mentioned, this is 
An Ansible playbook in YAML format, the very beginning defines several variables, the first of which is the path to a public S3 bucket that contains the CloudFormation template that we want to clone. And that CloudFormation template needs several parameters, all of which are defined in the following variables below that. So all of these are pretty straightforward. AWS region, bucket name, IAM information, and at the bottom, the name of the confirmation stack that we want to create and the name of the archive location that will eventually be configured on our rubric cluster. So the first task in this playbook creates the confirmation stack based off the template. One thing to notice here is that once the confirmation template runs, once the stack runs, the results will be registered in this variable. The rest of the information is all of the necessary parameters needed to create the CloudFormation stack, clone it based on a template, and then pass it the parameters that we need to actually perform the configuration in AWS. Additionally, a few tags are defined, which is a best practice to use tags to be able to identify uh, the resources that you're gonna create AWS. So that first task will run and complete, and those results will be returned. Once we have those results, we can actually configure our rubric cluster. We use this rubric AWS S3 cloud out module. Again, for the information that we need that's returned from CloudFormation, it'll be referenced in this CloudFormation results variable. So that's the results of our stack after it's run. And then there's some other variables that are defined at the top of the playbook that we can reference. And also we'll use the, the KMS master key that was created by CloudFormation. Finally, there's a third optional task that you can use to save the IAM access and secret keys uh, of the new user that was created by CloudFormation. So if you want to save these credentials and put them in uh, your secrets management, uh, you can use this optional task to save that information to a file. Okay, so let's actually run this playbook and we'll monitor the output. Okay, we can see that we're off and running. If we see here, our CloudFormation template has been cloned into a new stack and it create is in progress. So we'll use a little video magic to speed up this process because this does take a few minutes to complete. Okay, so we can see that our CloudFormation stack is completed and we've configured the archive location on our rubric cluster. So let's just take a quick look. So CloudFormation, so stack has been complete. Pop over to our rubric cluster and here is our new archival location, just as planned. So just to recap that, what we saw using this Ansible playbook, cloning the template defined in this variable, creating a CloudFormation stack from that template, passing along the parameters that are needed to configure all the necessary AWS resources to support cloud out, and then actually configuring the archive location on your rubric cluster. After that, all you would need to do is configure a new SLA domain and specify that location for archiving. Thanks for watching. Please visit rubric.com to learn more and cruise on over to build.rubric.com for all of your automation needs. Happy automating!